Hello, welcome to our DiffieQ Project 3 presentation on a rotating pendulum model. I'm Zaid Fackenthal. I'm David Jones. I'm Will Enzor. Uh, to give a brief overview of what this presentation is going to be about, uh, we were tasked to design and analyze a model system that uh, uh, realistically models the dynamics of a, think of a wrecking ball on a crane where you have a pendulum mass swinging outward. And if we press this video, you can see briefly what we are looking at. Wow, very cool. We have a measurement of a hanging rod, and we are going to be activating a rolling ball and seeing uh, how far we place a domino away from the edge of the swinging pendulum in order to hit it with a certain velocity. Yeah. All right, so here are, here, here are our key assumptions. Uh, first off, we're assuming friction and drag are negligible. This is simply because we do not want to deal, deal with air resistance uh, or the internal friction of a bearing or something like that. That's just not gonna bother modeling that right now. Uh, we're also assuming that the pendulum is a rigid body. Uh, by that we mean we're assuming that it is not a cable attaching, attached to the ball, but instead a rigid beam. Uh, this will mean that, uh, this will mean that as it swings around, the ball should stay perfectly in line with the uh, end of the horizontal beam. Uh, we're also assuming that the horizontal crane arm remains horizontal, so it's not lifting and changing its angle. Um, we'll, uh, we're also assuming that angular acceleration remains constant throughout movement. Um, so once it starts moving, it kind of just either keeps accelerating or it keeps moving. It's not gonna really change that much. Uh, we're also assuming a small angle approximation, which we'll explain later. Yeah. So we started by creating the top view and side view diagrams for our three-dimensional model to begin our analysis of the problem. The distance of the ball from the pole is r. The length of the arm is c because it is constant. The length of the pendulum is l. Theta is the angle of the central arm as it swings, and phi is the angle that the pendulum swings outward. The radius, therefore, is equal to C plus the top component of L, or L sine of phi. All right, now when we look at the forces just in the side view, uh, when we were analyzing the pendulum's motion, uh, we drew free body diagrams and the sum of forces of the, in the side view, as you do in any normal physics problem. Uh, the normal direction is equal to the tension in the stream, or the normal the components in the normal direction of our gravity and our force inertia. So we did actually not need to incorporate those into our model. However, the tangential direction is what is important to us. Uh, we were able to find the components of the weight, mass times gravity, and the force of inertia, mass times the centripetal acceleration, or as we found, radius times the angular velocity squared. The sum of the tangential forces, uh, we will now dive into deeper in a couple slides. Cool. Uh, so here we see the forces in the top view, uh, or forces in the top plane. Um, there is nothing pushing or pulling, I drag on the arm while it is swinging, because again, we're assuming that there is no drag. It's yuck. Um, <laughs> therefore, the sum of the forces acting on the arm in the top plane is zero, effectively. Um, and the mass times the second derivative of arc length is also zero. Um, we substitute our equation for r to get our final uh, equations. So we integrated the equation we derived on the previous slide once in order to solve for theta prime. While doing so, we divided both sides by mass. This is significant because it means it doesn't matter the mass of the ball induced in our model. In order to simplify the problem, we need to treat phi as a constant. 
we can do this because we are setting the equilibrium phi value for our model. Also, we approximated sine phi as phi, as shown in the lower left corner. We drew a graph to show visually why our approximation is valid. Mm -hmm. All right, now jumping into our derivations for the side view. As you can see, this is kind of a mouthful of a image. So first we wrote the equation uh, of the forces of inertia using Newton's second law. Then we applied the forces we took in the tangential direction from a couple slides back, as we said. Uh, and then we have the mass times the arc length for phi squared on acceleration on the left. Uh, since, again, uh, mass is across all sides, we're also able to, to cancel that out. And then we divided by L, which we're able to take out from the left side and divide it across so that we can isolate phi double prime. Uh, throughout this process, we also made a, another small angle assumption for the sine of angle and also of the cosine of phi, which we also uh, show in the top right corner. Um, uh, now that we have an isolated phi double prime, or as we changed it to beta prime, which beta is the derivative of phi, uh, this allowed us to obtain a linear system that we could plug into p-plane and is shown in the center of this image and also in the next slide. Uh, in order to get our numerical values, uh, as we said before, we are treating the angle in the equilibrium point as a constant. And we get to choose uh, in relationship between the angle and the velocity which one we want to set and find. So we uh, set an angle of 15 degrees and solved for velocity, uh, initializing the equation as equal to zero uh, uh, because there is uh, no outward acceleration because there's no, no drag. No, as we said before, there's the net forces, so this is equal to zero. And solving for velocity, uh, with inputting pi over 12 or 15 degrees, we are able to get 1.35 meters per second. Cool. Uh, so now looking at our first order system, uh, you'll see that uh, it is a nonlinear system because it consists of a term that is not a constant multiple of uh, phi. Uh, this is a term with phi in the uh, yeah, this is a term with phi in the denominator. In order for it to be a linear system, all terms would have to be constant multiples of phi and beta, or some function of that form. Yeah. So in this set of equations, which we put into p plane, we used x to represent phi and y to represent beta. The other constants are represented by the same letters we used in the equations shown on the previous slide. Notice how we have an equilibrium point in the middle and a sample solution curve circling it in the clockwise direction. This is an orbit, right? Yes. All right, so now that we are jumping into the equilibrium point, it's not surprising that it is at a phi value of 15 degrees and a beta value of zero, which makes sense in terms of our problem. Uh, P-plane actually pointed this out as a spiral, but when we look at the Jacobian and calculate the trace and determine, uh, we can therefore see it's actually a center, which makes more sense, or an orbit, which makes sense uh, with what a graph we are getting from this value. Uh, we could have also looked at the eigenvalues and seeing how they are imaginary, no, it's either a center, a spiral sink, or a spiral source. Cool. Uh, so now for our comparative analysis. Uh, when not at equilibrium, uh, phi prime is increasing and decreasing between two values, uh, specifically by initially, uh, specific, specified by initial conditions when you click somewhere on p-plane. Uh, as phi prime increases, phi prime proportionally increases and decreases, and likewise for phi prime, phi prime decreasing. Uh, the tangent vector at this point gi uh, points given are when either phi prime or uh, beta prime switch from increasing to uh, decreasing or vice versa. Whew. 
uh, and shows what vector in relationship between angular velocity and angular acceleration would be in terms of phi at a given point in time. So in our final state, we assumed that phi approaches equilibrium point throughout the swing, which is used for estimating where to place the domino. So the equilibrium point would be the best place for it to hit the domino because that's the farthest that it goes. And also, we knew that P plane doesn't necessarily model V prime at zero initially. All right, now for a couple of checks we made to um, well, check that our solution is valid, that the mass or the ball would indeed hit the domino at our set velocity from that angle. Uh, when just to verify our approximations for the small angle of sine and cosine for 15 degrees, you can see we have a 1.14% error and a 3.41% error respectfully. respectively. Uh, as in when you look at the lower image, uh, uh, this was our calculation for the domino distance where uh, we plugged in uh, the length of the crane arm and how much in the top view component of our angle times L uh, in order to get a distance of 0.71 meters. Uh, we are also able to calculate how far away the mass would be from the ground or the domino and that uh, we got was uh, 2.3, which is less than the height of domino. 0.23. 0.23, yeah. Which is less than the height of the domino, 0.3, so it would therefore make contact. Uh, and then plugging the velocity and angle back into our linear system of equations, our results in p-plane uh, meet real-world circumstances. Cool. Uh, so our conclusion. Uh, we have a good start to our design for a pendulum. Uh, if this were a real project, and we were to continue working on its design, we would also need to calculate the height and slope of the ramp needed for, uh, for the ball that launches the pendulum. Uh, we could easily do that using kinematics. Uh, well, it also, well, it would be somewhat difficult, uh, but relatively easy compared to the calculations we just did. Also, we need to make sure that the ball stops after hitting the pendulum, otherwise it could roll off the surface. It's on. Just little things. Um, other things for us to consider include uh, choosing a material that is strong and will not bend. Uh, we need to create stable joints that move smoothly and do not shake. Uh, and finally, we would need to consider aesthetics because, I mean, it's always going to look good. Of course. Um, since this pendulum is in a museum and it is meant to be shown off because style points matter. Yeah. And now we have a video of a wrecking ball hitting a car. <laughs> and... <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're it's laughing it's, at me. Oh, it's yeah. just yeah, that is exactly what we had. Yep, cool. Thanks and for watching. I totally forgot that was there. All Basically, right. we chose that because our pendulum works like a wrecking ball. It smashes out the competition. Uh, All right, let's end this video yeah, now before we get more dumb.